Bud Gregg here, Dream Team International. Should I buy rental properties or a brand new boat? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Broker Bud here, Dream Team International. Keller Williams Integrity First Real Estate in the Valley of the Sun. I uh, want to do a quick video here about another C-R-A-Z real estate story. Crazy real estate story. Um, and this would be season one, episode six. Thanks for tuning in. So uh, literally about 22 years ago, I was living in a subdivision in Mountain Park Ranch, which is part of Ahwatukee, which is part of Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, a neighbor came over and rang my doorbell and she's a dear friend. And uh, she came in and she sat down, which my office was the front of my house at that time. And she sat down at my desk and said, hey bud, I have been saving so hard for the past three or four years to buy a boat for me and my family. And she was ready to pull the trigger. She had $45,000, $50,000 saved. And I'm like, wow, good for you, congratulations. And, but then she asked me, should I buy, should I pay cash for this boat? And I took a second and thought about it and I said, no, if it were me, I would do this. I would do the following. And, and, and at the time, you could buy a rental property, three bedroom, two bath, 1,600 square foot, two car garage, uh, relatively new home in, in like Lakewood, as an example, uh, in, in Ahwatukee. And you could, you could pick up these properties for less than $200,000 each at the time, probably 180, 150, 180. Uh, and and I, I said, Cindy, I'll protect her name. Uh, hey, Cindy, this, this is exactly what I do. And I put this out on paper and I said, look, you, you take your $50,000 and you put 10% down on two rental properties, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, 1,600 square foot. You know, these are great rental properties. They'll rent to families, a little more upscale tenants than uh, college students, for instance, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, you know, you can pick these up for about 200 grand. The financing was probably six, 7% at the time. Uh, the, the, the payments on each of those properties would have been about a thousand or eleven hundred dollars each, but you could rent them for thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars. So that's some quick math there. You'd be cash flowing, you know, at least three hundred dollars per property. And then you go out and you finance this boat, a forty thousand dollar boat, thirty five thousand dollar boat, amortized over, I don't know, they probably do eighty months, eighty four months for those. Uh, the payment would be four hundred bucks, four fifty. So you've got two rental properties bringing in three hundred thousand each, or six hundred dollars a month, cash flow. You make the boat payment out of that money, and you still got a little bit left over for gas for the boat or repairs on the boat because you know boats they're <laughs> the most depreciating thing you could buy, uh, uh, with the exception of maybe Mercedes Benz. <laughs> That's my opinion. Anyhow, so so you, you have this depreciating asset that a tenant that, that that your tenants are literally paying for for you. Not only are they paying for the boat for you, but they're paying down the mortgages on two properties. Okay, and those properties today uh, would this is uh, this is 2019. Uh, those properties would be worth about $400,000. So you would have $800,000 in today's dollars of, of, of real estate assets uh, that, that were literally, and, and they'd be almost paid off because it was 22, three years ago that, that I was having this conversation with her, Cindy. And um, and and not that, that's not even including your tax benefits uh, for owning rental property as well. So this, I, I went through the whole scenario and I talked to her for about an hour, hour and a half, and it was, you know, it's a great plan. I mean, really great plan. And the next day, she pulled up and backed her new boat into her driveway. And it was gorgeous. And they definitely had fun with that boat because they had teenage kids and whatnot. Um, but she went out and paid cash for that boat. And I just, I was like, really? But it's okay. It, you know, some people, they don't have um, the vision perhaps, but they, they don't have the stomach to be a landlord. And there, there are, you, you would be a landlord, obviously, but you know, the, the benefits far outweigh, uh, the, the pros far outweigh the cons. So just a quick, funny story. Uh, she's still a friend, a dear friend to this day. And we've been on that boat with her a couple times. And, and it's, you know, she, she definitely used the boat, so that's a, that's another point to make. Is if you're going to buy toys like that, 
make sure you use them because they go down in value so fast that you have to really uh, enjoy them personally. So uh, a, a little bit of a rant there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. But hey, if you want to discuss investing in, 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 in residential real estate and the cash flow and, and tax benefits of those of those investments, reach out to us. We're happy to, uh, to, to meet with you and, and see if it's a good fit for you and, and, and get a plan for the future because we're doing it ourselves. Bud Gregg here, Dream Team International. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have an AMA zing day. We'll see you next time.